Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture nine. And in this segment, we're going to take a look at one of two exercises that will sort of test your mathematical understanding of the kinematic flow fields that we have been examining. So let's go ahead and take a look at a flow field that's given by the equations below. So the zonal wind as a function of x, y, excuse me, as a function of, <laughs> not a function of x, y, excuse me, it's a function of x, y, and z, that's equal to 0.001 y, and then the meridional wind as a function of x, y, and z, that's equal to zero. And given that information, calculate the vertical vorticity of the flow pattern. So I'll give you guys a few minutes to get uh, to attempt that, and hopefully it arrives some sort of arrive at some sort of answer. So hopefully the result that you got looks something like what's about to show up on the screen here. So. One thing that, again, is really helpful for solving these problems is to draw some sort of illustration to get an idea of what sort of result you should expect when you go to actually do all the math. So if we take a look at this flow pattern here, the meridional component is just zero everywhere. So there's no wind running in the north-south direction anywhere along this flow pattern. But as we go in the y direction, along this y-axis here, as we go in the y-axis, our zonal wind is increasing as we go up the y-axis. As we go down the y-axis, our zonal wind is in fact decreasing. So that means we get a flow pattern that looks like this. And if you can imagine sticking like a, a pinwheel or a paddle wheel in this flow pattern, you can see or you can sort of visualize how it wants to rotate in the clockwise direction. And in fact, if you want to, you could take something like a pencil and your right, uh, let's say in your right hand, lay it flat in your right hand, and then move your left hand over the top of that pencil. And you can see how that pencil wants to rotate in the clockwise direction. So just sort of a demonstration that you could do with a pencil if you've got it handy, how you can see how if you move the top of the pencil faster than the bottom of the pencil, it will in fact rotate in the clockwise direction, where if you move the bottom of the pencil faster than the top, it will rotate in the other direction. And since this is rotating in the clockwise direction, by the sign convention we defined earlier, then we should expect a vertical vorticity that is negative. So whatever result we get from calculating the vorticity, we expect that result to be negative, which means it's rotating in the clockwise direction as depicted on the screen here. So let's actually go ahead and do the math. So just using the definition of vertical vorticity, zeta is equal to dv dx minus du dy. So we need to calculate the derivatives of v and u. So we plug in the functions that we have for v. Remember, v is just 0. There's no meridional component anywhere. So that's just 0. And the derivative of that is also 0. And then minus the partial derivative with respect to y of the zonal component, which is 0.001y. And if we evaluate that derivative, we get this result back. We get zeta is equal to minus 0.001. And the units for vorticity are per second, which is also the same units of divergence and even deformation. All those kinematic quantities we looked at have the same units, and those are in units of per second. And you can see this in fact negative, which is what we expected to get. And this is this vorticity is the same everywhere throughout the flow pattern. So hopefully you got an answer that looked something like this. Uh, if so, awesome. If not, hopefully uh, now you understand what exactly is, uh, have a better idea of what's going on. And that's going to do it for this segment. And the next segment is going to be sort of a similar idea. We'll take a look at another uh, mathematical problem related to the kinematic flow patterns. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.